Hello, and thank you for joining me today on another video where we explore the National Cycle Network. In this one, we're using Route 81 to make our way from Wolverhampton to Telford. We start our journey on the Birmingham Mainline Canal as it crosses under Wensfield Road, just on the edge of Wolverhampton city centre. This is where we ended the last video when we cycle from Birmingham to Wolverhampton using Route 5 and Route 81. So in this one we're going to carry on along Route 81 to Telford. From Wolverhampton centre we're going to make our way northwest using the canal network at first and then roads to make our way to the edge of Telford where Route 81 meets Route 55. So without further ado let's make a start on this almost 20 mile ride. The first part of which follows the Birmingham Mainline Canal to the junction with the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal, which is just a couple of miles away from here. Although the route starts along the canal network, the majority of it is along roads, and that's the reason I've chosen my road bike today. But as you can see by the bumpiness of this footage, especially as we make our way around this lock gate, this path is not exactly the perfect territory for a road bike. And I did begin to wonder whether I'd made the right choice especially as the path narrowed as it headed under this first bridge. Road bikes are not the most manoeuvrable things in the world, and I did think I'd much rather have been on my mountain bike at this point. But after passing under the bridge, and then through this gate, which was easy enough on my narrow handlebar road bike, not so easy on a fully loaded touring bike or with a child trailer, the path opened up and became much wider and much smoother, perfectly acceptable for riding a road bike on. We begin to descend what seems to be an endless series of locks, some of them with good surfaces like that one, and some of them that become quite narrow and quite bumpy as they go under bridges after the lock. There's no escaping you in an urban area here, as the canal makes its way under an awful lot of road bridges, and under a few rail bridges as well, before eventually you make your way to the Stafford Road Bridge, again a narrow bumpy path down under the bridge. But as we make our way to the other side, the canal seems to open up a little bit and you feel like there's a bit more breathing space. After descending yet another lock, we get a fantastic view of the Oxley Viaduct. This was built between 1847 and 1849 by Robert Stevenson and William Baker and it formed part of the line between Birmingham and Shrewsbury. This impressive looking viaduct is grade 2 listed and it consists of 12 arches with the arch that crosses the canal on the skew compared to the other ones, apparently making this viaduct fairly unique. As we continue our journey along this rather pleasant section of canal, there's yet more locks to descend as we make our way to the junction with the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal. There's actually 21 locks on this section of canal. They lower the canal a total of 37 metres over 2 miles and were part of the original canal built by James Brindley in 1772. The final lock is just before the junction with the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal, where we promptly cross over that canal and take a right turn to continue our journey. The cycle path along the side of the canal here is generally pretty good, although there was one section that again made me question my choice of bike. As I bumped over these drainage ditches and rode through the mud, I did think, should I have bought my mountain bike? But the path is generally quite good, and it's not far up here until we reach the junction of the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal and the Shropshire Union Canal. We head over the Shropshire Union Canal and then take a left to follow its course. This canal was quite a latecomer in terms of canals, not being finished until 1835. It was built by the Shropshire Union Canal and Railways Company, hence the name Shropshire Union Canal. It was the last major civil engineering project undertaken by Thomas Telford, so it seems quite appropriate that we're using it to make our way towards the town named in his honour. The surface of the towpath here is really pretty good, until you come to the stretch between the last two bridges. Here it turns into a muddy track, and as I was on my road bike I decided just to skip this and take a detour along the roads. And from here on in we're pretty much on the roads all the way to the edge of Telford, and the fact that the blue line on the Sustrans map was dotted gave me the impression that this may be an unloved part of the network, more of a recommended route than an official part of the network. But I was pleasantly surprised to find that this part of the route through Billbrook and Codsall 
was extremely well signposted, with rather new looking blue signs at every turn, and I mean literally every turn as we made our way through this residential area. After making another right turn, clearly marked by this signpost, we make our way onto Hushpins Lane and out of this urban area, and onto the type of lanes I'm more used to riding on my road bike. This quiet rural lane will take us most of the way to our next destination on Route 81, or Brighton. As we continue down this road it looked like the good signage was going to carry on, but unfortunately as we take a right turn and then a left turn onto Harriet Hayes Road just before it joins the A41, the signs unfortunately disappeared. I did spot a small sticker directing us right just before I reached the A41, but it certainly wasn't up to the standard that we'd seen in Billbook and Codsall. This stretch along the A41 is only a short stretch fortunately, because this is an extremely busy road and an extremely fast road, so do take a lot of care if you do plan on coming down here. The route heads into Albrighton under the Birmingham to Shrewsbury Railway, past Albrighton train station and down towards the High Street, where we take a right and head through the centre of the town. As we head out of Albrighton, the signs again improve and we're directed left here, down the side of the A41 on this cycleway. Which although not the best in the world, is still much better than cycling on the A41. This cycleway takes us to RAF Cosford. Opened in 1938 as an aircraft maintenance, storage and technical training area, it's named after Cosford Grange House at the southwest of the airfield. It was originally a grass runway here, but during World War II it was upgraded to tarmac. During the war it continued to be used for aircraft maintenance, as well as a base to deliver Spitfire aircraft from to the various places they were needed around the country. We eventually pass under again the Birmingham to Shrewsbury Railway and are greeted with the sight of the runway. As well as the many hangars here, you may also get a sight of the Midlands Air Ambulance, which is based here. A little further down the road is the RAF Museum, which is where, if you were wondering, I got that fantastic intro footage in front of this fighter jet here at the entrance to the museum. It's a great day out, and it is free entry. The only thing that you're asked to pay for is parking, so there's some incentive to get on your bike. Moving on from the museum, we again cross the Birmingham to Shrewsbury Railway, this time over the top, giving an opportunity for some train spotting. The route continues down Neachley Lane as it heads towards Shifnal. There are a couple of short sharp climbs on this section, nothing substantial by any means, but I think because the route had been so flat up to this point I did notice them. We then join Stanton Road, a much busier road than Neachley Lane but I was happy to see the signpost there directing us left onto this. This is a fast section of B road that will take us into Shifnal, fortunately only about a mile away from here. There's nothing too much exciting to see in Shifnal. Not that it's a bad place, but we're directed away from the centre around residential streets. We leave Shifnal using Horton Lane, which after a short climb widens and flattens out as it makes its way to Junction 4 of the M54. It's worth noting that the route here recently changed and there is a signpost still directing us right here along the old route, which has changed due to a new housing development on the edge of Telford. We need to carry on straight between the M54 and the services. And if you want to learn more about those, I suggest you check out Auto Shenanigans channel. He's done great videos on both if that's your cup of tea. From the end of this road we join a traffic free section, which takes us around the M54 island and upwards into the area known as Priors Lee. Here we come across Priorsley Lake. This is a man-made lake, built to manage the water runoff from the many houses and roads that have been built in the area. It's currently used by the Telford Sailing Club. Continuing up Castle Farm Way, named after the farm that previously occupied this area, we pass by some housing estates under construction. Or if you're watching this in a couple of years time, we pass by some new houses. We take a very well signposted left turn and head up a cycle path which takes us through the centre of Priorsley. This cycle path, with the exception of a small piece of quiet road that we need to use, takes us all the way up to our final point of this ride, where Route 81 crosses over with Route 55. This is on the edge of Telford, where Castle Farm Way meets the A5. From here you can take Route 55 and make your way to Telford Town Centre and then down to Coalport, 
or follow Route 55 in the other direction, towards Newport and then on to Stafford. And then there's Route 81, which you can use to make your way to Wellington and then on to Shrewsbury. I've got guides to all these routes on the channel, so please do subscribe and check them out. And make sure that you don't miss any of my videos to come. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and keep cycling.